This is the Pixel 7 Pro, Google's latest and greatest flagship smartphone. I've been using the Pixel 7 Pro for one month, and in this video, we'll be going over my complete experience with it. We will cover the performance, battery life, camera, and if it's worth buying. Google has refined the design on the Pixel 7 lineup. The camera bar is now one entire piece, and it changed from glass to aluminum, and it blends into the frame of the phone. The power button and volume rocker are now slightly lower, making it more accessible and easier to use one-handed. But this can cause a slight inconvenience when using car mounts or tripod mounts. The buttons will get pressed on most mounts, so you will have to fiddle with the phone and the mount so that the buttons don't get pressed. Another change that I'm really happy about is that Google reduced the curvature on the edges of the display. It is more subtle, and in my opinion, it looks way better than the curved display on the Pixel 6 Pro. I would have also been happy if Google got rid of the curved display on the Pixel 7 Pro, and this would have made picking up a full adhesive tempered glass screen protector much cheaper, and not one of those tempered glass that only stick on the edges and end up falling off very easy. The upgraded 12 gigs of RAM alongside the new Tensor G2 chip brings about some major improvements over the first generation Tensor processor. The performance of the Tensor G2 chip has been excellent. It has been handling everyday tasks with ease. Performance is not really much of an issue in 2022 when choosing high-end smartphones from all competitors. Instead of focusing on raw power, Google has been focusing on giving its user the best experience possible through its software. So far Google has done a pretty good job, but there are a few areas where it can use some minor improvements. Gaming on the Pixel phone has felt smooth, and I haven't noticed any drop frames. You can expect a consistent 60 frames per second while playing Apex Legends Mobile, and so far the experience has been fluid for me. When I have the graphics set to Extreme HD and the brightness at around 80%, the phone does tend to get a little hot after 40 minutes of gaming on it. Now when I lower the graphics settings down to Ultra HD and keep the same 80% brightness, the phone barely gets warm after 1 hour and a half of gaming which I think is pretty good. So both the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro get a much brighter display. The Pixel 7 Pro gets a 1500 nits of peak brightness while the Pixel 7 gets a 1400 peak brightness. So both screens will be very easy to see when it's bright outside. Now you will need to have the adaptive brightness enabled to reach the peak brightness when you're outdoors, otherwise you will be limited to 1000 nits of brightness when you manually adjust the brightness slider to max. The phone has been extremely responsive and the 120Hz display is very smooth. This makes scrolling through articles, social media apps throughout the day very enjoyable. Something else that makes it feel much better is the vibration haptics. They feel amazing on the Pixel 7. I have not encountered any issues while scrolling. The phone doesn't stutter at all when I scroll near the edges like some users claim, but hopefully Google pushes out an update that can resolve that issue for those of you who have it. So the in-display fingerprint scanner has been working well. The phone has been unlocking on the first try for the majority of the times. So the Pixel 7 brings back face unlock and it has been fast and reliable under good lighting conditions. So if you're in a poor lit area, face unlock doesn't do so well. So I normally just end up using the fingerprint unlock when I'm outdoors during the night. So the Pixel 7 Pro has the same 5000 mAh battery that the Pixel 6 Pro has. But with better CPU optimization, the battery life on this has been great. So I've been getting about 6-7 to seven hours of screen on time with always on display, Bluetooth and location enabled 24-7. I also have the now playing feature enabled and at my workplace there's always music playing for the entire day so my phone is constantly listening and picking up the song name. During the work week, when I don't use my phone as often, I get roughly 4 hours of screen on time and I start my day at 8am and end it at around 12am and end with about 20-30% to battery left. Now during the weekend when I use my phone more, I get 5-6 to six hours of screen on time ending the day at 12am with about 15% battery left. So I can definitely see this getting up to 8 hours of screen on time if you really push it with all the features enabled. Like any other phone, the Pixel also has battery saver to help you conserve battery, but you also have an option to enable extreme battery saver mode which will stop all the apps you don't need and only keep your selected essentials app active so that you can interact with them, and this is really helpful when you're out and you're running low on battery. Now going on to another neat feature, if you swipe down on the notification shade all the way down, on the bottom it gives you a notification of how many apps are running in the background. If you tap on that, it will give you a list of all the apps that are running and it gives you the option to stop them right away so that it doesn't continue to consume battery. With this I noticed that Pandora stays running in the background for a very long time and this only happens after I disconnect it from Android Auto. This doesn't happen if I open the app and close it on the phone. So every time I get out of the car, I'm constantly having to stop Pandora from the drop down menu. Another area that the new G2 processor has improved is the AI machine learning. Google claims that it is 60% faster and 20% more efficient. The speech to text recognition is incredibly powerful. It provides near accurate transcription of the audio that it is capturing in real time. This is incredibly useful for those of you who want to record your class lectures or meetings so that you can refer to it at a later time. You can also use this to help out your classmates that miss class by sharing the transcript with them. 
One of the features that I really hope that Google implements into the software is the ability to quickly switch the sound output like Samsung does. On a Samsung device, you can switch the sound output from the notification panel to either the phone speaker or whatever you are connected to, which is really handy. So when my wife and I are in the same car, both of our phones connect to the car for phone calls and such. So every time I want to watch a video with sound on my phone, I have to go into my phone's Bluetooth settings and disconnect it from the car. Having the ability to quickly switch the sound output would be amazing. Like and comment if you agree. The messaging experience is also better. If you're texting someone that speaks a different language, your phone will help you out by translating the text to the language that you speak. There will be a prompt that will automatically pop up at the top of the messaging app to let you quickly enable the translation. Now this isn't working when you're in the full messaging app, only in the messaging bubble for some odd reason. I do remember it popping up in the full messaging app when I first got the phone, but then it just randomly stopped working. So I don't know what happened. Let me know if you guys are also encountering this issue or if it was just me imagining that it worked in the full messaging app. Or you can also tap on the translation icon on the keyboard to get your text translated before you send it. So the Pixel 7 Pro brings a few improvements to the already powerful camera. The photo quality is excellent throughout each lens. The details and sharpness are great, the colors pop, and the highlights aren't blown out. Now something that I notice is the transition between the 1X and 5X is not as smooth as the Pixel 6 Pro. Of course that one is going from a 1X to a 4X, and as you can see here on the Pixel 7 Pro it kind of lags when it goes from 1 to 5X. Another thing that I notice is that each lens captures a picture at a slightly different color temperature. When you take a photo with the telephoto lens, the picture does tend to come out a little warmer than the pictures captured on the main lens or wide angle lens. The good thing is that you can manually adjust the temperature with the slider on the viewfinder, which is located on the left side before you take the picture. And you can also adjust the exposure and contrast from the viewfinder. The Tensor G2 chipset also improves the camera processing on the Pixel camera. It takes less time to capture nice eye photos, meaning less time that you need to hold the phone still, which leads to less blurry photos. Overall, the Pixel 7 Pro produces some beautiful and really cool pictures with this nice eye feature. I really hope that they can bake this feature into the Instagram stories like they did with Snapchat. That would be super cool. So Google Super Res Zoom does an amazing job at clearing up photos. Even at night, you can get some good pictures with the 30 times zoom. Another awesome thing is that you can now capture micro shots. It uses the wide angle lens to do it and you can capture fine details of close-up objects. I didn't really end up using this feature as often, but it's there in case you want to explore it and get creative. Google is finally putting some huge efforts behind their video technology and the video looks very stable and under good lighting condition, there's little to no noise. The quality is way better than on the Pixel 6 Pro. The Pixel 7 does bring a new feature called Cinematic Blur where it keeps your subject in focus and it adds blur to the background. The quality on this mode also looks good, but the autofocus is not as precise and the edge detection is not as good. I'm sure this will improve with upcoming softwares, but for now, it's something that it isn't too reliable, but I am excited to see how this improves over time. Oh, and this only has the option to record in 1080p for now. Okay, so that wraps it up. So thank you all for watching and feel free to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more tech related videos and I will talk to you on the next one.